Hi everyone and welcome to another array processing video. The goal of this video is to outline notation and the basic structure of a narrowband conventional beamforming system. Specifically, we'll define what we mean by the narrowband measurement vector x. We'll talk about the conventional beamformer and how it is the spatial matched filter for a plane wave signal. And we'll define what we mean by the narrowband scanned response and briefly discuss how to compute it. For our scenario, we're considering a uniform line array oriented along the z-axis. The zeroth sensor is at z0, the n-1 sensor is at z n-1. And each sensor um, detects a continuous time signal, so x0 of t is the continuous time signal for the zeroth sensor. We run that through an A to D converter. That gets us a signal x0 of n that's sampled in time. And then to get our narrowband signal at some desired frequency omega0, we simply take the Fourier transform and evaluate it at, at omega0. We store that in x0 of omega0. We can do that for each of these sensors, right? Run each of them through an A to D converter and take the Fourier transform at our desired frequency. We stack them in a vector, and that becomes the vector x. That's our narrowband measurement. The thing I want to point out here is this box that says Fourier transform at omega zero. Really, in a practical scenario, what we're going to do is compute, probably using the FFT, the fast Fourier transform, um, we compute the FFT and then we take just one bin at the desired frequency, and that's what we store in this narrowband measurement vector x. So our narrowband beamformer takes the narrowband input vector x and produces a scalar output y. It does this by processing the data with a spatial filter defined by a weight vector w. Specifically, it computes the inner product of the weight vector w with the measurement vector x. Um, so that inner product is w Hermitian x, where the Hermitian represents the conjugate transpose. And that scalar output represents the Fourier transform of the plane wave signal that we're looking for at the phase center of the array, in this case at the whatever we've defined to be our zeroth uh, sensor. So the goal in designing a beamformer is to design a weight vector w so that whatever our signal of interest is will add constructively, and then signals from other directions will add destructively and be attenuated. So, um, remember, our signal of interest is a plane wave, right? So a plane wave coming into our little array here, right? We've got these plane wave fronts. It hits, the way I've sketched it here, it hits Z0 sensor first and Z n minus 1 sensor last. So um, what's received across the array is just time-delayed versions of the, the signal hitting at Z0. Um, but remember, we've taken a Fourier transform, right? We're dealing with narrow band signals. So a, time de a delay in time corresponds to a phase shift in the frequency domain. So the measurement, the narrow band measurement across the array is just, they're just phase shifted versions of one another. So we're gonna design our weight vector so that um, it will align all of the phases of our desired signal and uh, ideally misalign the phases of the undesired signals. So how do we choose weights for our conventional beamformer? Well, remember we're looking for narrow band plane wave signals. So the measurement vector uh, that I would observe for a single narrow band plane wave uh, could be written this way. It could be written as this common complex amplitude A of omega zero that's common to all of the sensors. And then um, the difference between each sensor is just a phase shift, and that phase shift is a function of where the sensor is along the array. And this vector here of phase shifts is a complex exponential vector that we define as the narrow band plane wave replica vector. So V of KZS is a plane wave replica um, that includes all of these phase shifts for a plane wave signal with vertical wave number KZS. Okay, so we can define our conventional beamforming weights to be just a normalized version of that replica vector. And what that will do when we apply them in the way this 
standard structure has, we apply W Hermitian X, right? So the Hermitian is going to flip the sign on all those phase shifts, causing that single plane wave to add constructively in the beam former. And hopefully it'll cause um, other plane waves coming from different directions. It won't have the right set of phase shifts, um, and so they won't add constructively. We can think of the conventional beamformer as a spatial matched filter, right? We have this template signal, which is the, the plane wave replica signal, V of KZS, and that's the template we're looking for. And so the conventional beamformer is basically the spatial matched filter looking for that template. We'll talk more in future classes about how this um, corresponds to a spatial matched filter. So the conventional beamformer gets us the output for one particular direction. We'd call it the look direction, right? That's associated with KZS. It says which direction is our filter design, our spatial filter designed for. It's designed for the look direction KZS, and a single conventional beamformer gets us the output in that direction. The scanned response requires actually a bank of conventional beamformers to look in m different directions. So here we define um, different weight vectors for different directions. So for direction kz1, direction kz2, direction kz up to direction kzm. That's m different beamformers. So if we define m different beamformers, then we can calculate a scanned response where we're essentially scanning across all of the different directions associated with the bank of beamformers. So we can define that using nice matrix notation as a, a matrix multiply where we store all the weight vectors in a big weight matrix W and we compute W Hermitian X, right? Um, and so our scanned response is when we are scanning across a bunch of different look directions and we get uh, not a scalar output, now we get a vector output because we have the output for each of those different m directions. I want to emphasize one thing here. The scanned response and the beam pattern are not the same thing. The scanned response is the output of m different beamformers for a single measured input vector x. So somebody gives me a measured input vector x and I calculate the scanned response across a bunch of different directions, a bunch of different angles using this matrix multiply W Hermitian x. So I have a matrix containing m different weight vectors and I process a single input vector x. The beam pattern, remember, is the frequency response of a single beam former defined by one weight vector w. So I'm given a weight vector w, um, and I compute its beam pattern, which is its frequency response. I can also do that with a matrix multiply. In another video, we defined that as W Hermitian V, where V now is a matrix of plane wave replica vectors. Right? Um, so these are two different things. And I want you, I'm just calling your attention to that because it's a point of confusion. The scanned response is computed using a measured input vector, and you, you define the output of a bunch of different beamformers for that single measured input vector. The beam pattern is the frequency response of a single beamformer defined by a single weight vector, W. So this video has provided a bit more insight into the structure and notation we use to talk about narrowband beamformers. I hope you found it useful. Um, you can find more videos on uh, my YouTube page, um, and if you need any more information, you can send me an email. Thanks for listening.